Anyway, a funny thing happened on my way to this interview. Um, there I was reading Susanna's novel, Winter's Sea, over the weekend, taking in all this history about 18th century Scotland, uh, soaking up the story of the Jacobites and the King's James, uh, reveling in Susanna's devotion to history, which I always do, getting swept up by this guy, Nathaniel Hook, and just for fun, I thought, oh, well, I'll Google this Nathaniel Hook to see, you know, make a comparison. Mm -hmm. And behold, uh, a Q&A pops up from some site in Germany, which I guess migrated to your site, right. uh, in which you describe, among other things, uh, that this is your favorite, favorite book. It is my favorite book. Now, yeah, yeah. every author says that. Actually, no, every, authors are usually really careful not to say that. <laughs> but, and, and it was true, because it, I never really did have a favorite. I had, every book is, is a, it's a memory of that moment when you wrote it. And for me, it's a memory of a year and a half or more when I was writing it. So it's not just a little tiny moment of my life. I can remember, well, this, I was writing this when my daughter was a year old, or I was writing this when my son was born, or I was writing this when I was living in Wales with these wonderful people. And, and they all sort of remind me of something in my life. They're all a little snapshot of what I was at that time of my life, too. Your opinions and your, what's important to you works its way into the book at the time. My sentimental favorite always has been um, Mariana, no, mostly because, not, not just because the story came so easily for me, because it, it did, it came really easily, that story, um, but because it was, it was the book that sort of opened all the doors for me. It was the book that just kind of went out there and magically paved my way, and it, it got me my publishers overseas, it got me my British agent, it got me everything that has brought me good things in, in my working life came from that book. So, and it, it's one of those books that, um, it seems to touch a lot of people. It seems to reach a lot of people, and they seem to respond to it, male and female. I get a lot of fans who love that story. Mm -hmm. So up until that point, that, that had been my favorite. Um, but The Winter Sea was the first time in a long time that I have experienced that kind of writing, where the book just came. Normally, I would sit down, and my husband can attest to this, I, I sit down for two or three hours a day, and I'm lucky if I get two pages done. I'm lucky if I get up and I've, I've done a solid two pages, I feel great. Mm -hmm. With The Winter Sea, I'd be getting up, and I'd have done 10 pages, 15 pages, 20 pages. I'd be going back up to do more. And it just came out of the ether, and it was, it was a really, really enjoyable experience writing that book. So, Which, for those people who may not have read the book, and mm -hmm. I won't get into too many of the details, that's up to you, right. is reflected in the yeah. hero, or the heroine, the heroine yeah. um, who is writing madly, uh, delivering copy yeah. well beyond what the agent is expecting. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is all, this is not just a full of parallels, but there's like eight levels of yeah. what's going on here. and. That's extraordinary because we know you and we'll yeah. have all this feeling and I just don't want all, all that to get in the way, oh, but it's okay. amazingly, yeah. um, it's amazingly <laughs> you. It's, well, and, it's and that's, maybe why, that's maybe why it's part of my favorite as well, is because this is the first time I was able to um, really put a writer in the heroine's chair. The, the, my very first book, Undertow, which um, is long since out of print, and people pay far, far too much for it. If they go on eBay, it's just ridiculous. It's a little book. It's just a little 50,000 word book that was published into the library market. It's not a fantastic book. It's not bad, but it's, it was written by a 24, five year old you know, girl. Uh, it's not Mariana. So please, please, please don't pay $200 for it. I, I just get, find a library that still has it or, or something or get 10 people together and buy it, but just don't pay that price for it. Um, but that had, a, had an author as the main character because your first book is almost always autobiographical to some degree. And that one was, was very autobiographical. Is this one more so? This one, Carrie is, Carrie the heroine is parts of me. She's younger, thinner, prettier, and I, I always see her as blonde, but... Um, She's, she's, got a lot of, she's got a lot of me in her, but her, I was able to put in those little bits about being a writer that you don't usually read about in books about being a writer. Um, I gave her my writing habits. I, I, like, I love to write at night. I haven't mm -hmm. been able to do it so much so now that I've got the two little kids. I tend to write in the afternoons when my son's in kindergarten. Um, but I always loved best to write from 10 p.m. to 2 in the morning. And were you, and you, and were you sleepless in the process of oh, yeah. writing this? Oh, yeah. And I would just, is? yeah. Yeah, I would just go for hours and hours, and the, the quicker the quicker it comes, the less sleep you get, and the more the more you just want to get on into the book. And I do get lost in the book. I do um, tend to 
walk around kind of in a spacey place, and people have to come and remind me to feed them, and, and all this kind of, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's a fun thing to do, but I was able to, and I was able to give her all those little things that I have encountered when I'm doing research for a book that I couldn't necessarily put in the book I was doing. When I was doing Name to the Dragon, I lived in, in the house in Wales that I set the book in, and I had a 50p coin meter, which is a little black box that sits all wired into your electrical system, and you have to keep throwing 50p coins, which are these enormous things, into the, the meter. In my case, it was up over the door, so I had to stand on a chair, reach up, and just like, just like Carrie like does, Carrie, yeah. um, and plunk it in, otherwise your electricity went off. And then you had like no lights, you had nothing. I had an AGA, coal-fired little AGA, like she does, that ran the hot water heater, like hers does. <laughs> and again, if my fire went out, because I wasn't the best fire maker at the very beginning, I got really, really good by the end, but I wasn't the best at the beginning. Um, and I would lose all my hot water for the day. So then you'd be walking around you know, with cold baths and, and, and stuff. And, and I couldn't really put that in the book I was writing because it didn't have a place for it. The person living in that house in my book was a, a fairly well-off author, and he didn't have a lot of you know, um, deprivation. Needs. Yeah, he, he had everything he needed, yeah. but he had central heating and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But I always loved my 50p coin meter. I took a picture of it before I left, and I wanted to use it somewhere.